but it's in park. All right, we got a Lincoln MKX with the old shift to park error. It can also uh, cause your battery to drain when you get that stuff too, and that's what happened to this vehicle. So come along, I'll show you how I fix this. Okay, as you see them in the vehicle, typically you go and put your vehicle in park, and then you either, you know, turn the button off or take your key out, and you get out, and you go on your way. But every once in a while, on these Fords, or in this case a Lincoln, you'll see the, hey, shift it into park, you forgot to put it in park, and you're like, hey, I put it in park. Well, there's a little switch down there, a little micro switch that's not making contact anymore, at least either all the time or intermittently, and that's generally what's causing this issue. Now, if it happens to you and you need to, you know, you haven't fixed it yet and you need to hurry up and clear it, just sit there, just mess with this button like this. You see how I'm just pressing the button in and out? And you can see, watch the P up there when I press it in and out. You see how it's going away? And so you can see that we're working that micro switch down there. So right now it's working. But when it's not working, when you let this go, that P will not be lit up like it is right now. And so it'll look like that if there's an issue. And then obviously when you try to shut it off, it's going to tell you, hey, shift to park. Now you can see I'm holding it in right now. Of course, when I got the you know camera rolling, everything's working. But periodically this vehicle is doing the old shift to park thing, and that's why we're going to fix it. So the micro switch that's down in there, um, we're going to go ahead and replace it with a brand new one. Okay, first thing we'll do, we'll apply the parking brake, which I did. And then we want to put the seat all the way down and then back as far as it'll go just to get out of the way, both of them. Now the part that failed is a switch that's part of this um, selector knob assembly. Luckily for us, we can just buy the switch and just replace the switch. Many models, um, you have to replace the whole assembly, which can be costly and a lot more uh, labor involved. So luckily we only got to do the switch today. All right, first thing we got to do is pull some trim off. So we're going to pull the sides right here, and then we got this H piece right here, which you can see looks kind of like an H right here. So first thing we'll do, we just we should be able to pull this up, and this too, and then this last, and you see it comes off just like that. There's some clips, and we'll get the other side. Come on. Just like that. And now let me get a better angle and we'll get this piece. All right, now to get this piece, usually we can pull up on the edges like this and get it. Come on, there's like three clips right here on each side. We can usually do it like that, but on this middle one, I like to do that so that we don't break it. We're not putting too much pressure right here, but you can see that's all it is, just like that, and we can pry it up. Now, obviously, this is a Lincoln MKX, and a Ford Edge is very similar, um, but the lit, the trim layout might be a little bit different. All right, now we just have to deal with the trim on the side here, and then we got this piece of carpet, which is a separate piece of trim that goes down. Now, sometimes, well, we can look right in there. We got some clips right down in there. Sometimes we can just pull these apart see without doing much and we pull that one there's like three like that there we go you see one two three like that actually there's more but that's the clips that attach this to this but all we needed to do was we just have to get to those four bolts we got one they're actually a screw with a bolt head we got two there's a third one right there and then there's a fourth one where is it right here so as long as, see, I can get to those, I'm not going to go any further. We can just snap that back into place when we're done. Sometimes you got to reach under here and pull this apart and then go to here. Um, but in this case, we didn't need to do that. The other side is exactly the same. And so we'll just, I'll work on popping that side out and then we'll get these uh, screws out. All right, using a seven millimeter socket with a quarter inch ratchet. We'll just go ahead and loosen these up. And that's what they look like. All right, and for these down here, all I'm going to do is take the same thing. I'm just going to pull this back, and I'm just going to loosen them up just like that. I'm going to do that for all of them and on the other side. 
and then we'll be ready to get this out. All right, as you can see, it's pretty easy just to pull that back. You can easily reach in there with that quarter inch ratchet and get these out. All right, now that we got all that, you can see that our trim right here is loose. So we can maneuver it around. We're gonna have to try to reach around under there and disconnect a couple of connectors right there before we go any further. We might even have to move this to neutral. All right, I went and turned the vehicle on. We're in neutral now. Now we have a little more room to maneuver down in there. I'm gonna have to disconnect that uh, clip right there. Can you get a shot at it where those wires are coming down? So right there, there's a clip right there. We just gotta reach in and disconnect. And there's one over here. Where is it? Right there at the end of my finger. I'm gonna have to reach in there and disconnect it also. All right, I'll just reach around, unplug that one, and I'll see if I can reach this one down below. It's kind of tight. And I did, there it is right there. I'll try to get a better shot once we get it out. All right, now we gotta disconnect this little leather boot from this plastic trim. And underneath, there's uh, two tabs on each side right here, and then there's a tab over here, and then there's a little piece that sticks out over here. So that's the piece that kind of goes in first and then the rest of them snap into place. And so when we take it off, we kind of got to start over here or maybe on the sides and then here and pop it down that way and then it'll pull out like this. Um, so I'm going to have to try to reach under there and uh, disconnect them. All right, here's a shot underneath. You can see there's one of the tabs there, there's one there, and there's one just like it on the front side here. And then two just like this on the other side. So I got to deal with those five clips and pop it down and then it'll come out. And you can see that's what it looks like when it's popped down. Usually right, right through here, right through the opening. You can just press on those on each side. And then the back one, if you can reach it from the back side, it's kind of hard with these cup holders in there. You could just press it in. If not, what you do is you just put uh, your pocket screwdriver and just gently from this side, you can just reach through there and just pry it towards the front of the car right there, just using that little lip. Basically, if you look at this one right here, this little piece right here, you can just get to it on this side and you can just pry it over a little bit. Now remember, we're just prying a little bit. You pry a lot, you'll break that and you'll be buying one of these. Now to release it, we should be able to just, yeah, we just pull it that way a little bit and down. And now you can see it's fully released from here. Now we just got to contend with a few more electrical connectors up here. All right, now if we lift it and pull it back a little bit, you can see there's one right there we got to reach and grab. And then there's a couple more. I'm trying not to do any damage here. We might have to pull this back a little bit more. There we go. There, we can get to this one. Get that. We get this one here. Squeeze down and pull that one out. Whoops, it did not like us doing that with the vehicle turned on. Pull that one. Is there any more? And that's it. There's our whole assembly come out just like that. And there's our prize right there, our little switch. Ooh, scrap if dropped. I guess we better not drop it. All right, I put it back in park so the vehicle won't be angry with me. And it's quitting time for me. So I'll be back in the morning. We'll grab the new part and get this thing fixed. Uh, for you, it'll just be like a second. For me, it's going to be overnight. All right, it's the next morning. Of course, we're starting the day off with some coffee and our fancy schmancy disgruntled mechanic coffee mug. Let's get to work. Now I got the charger on. Hopefully you can't hear it. Um, one of the issues with the, that happens when these switches go bad is that it drains your battery because the modules stay awake looking for you to put it in park and they're not smart enough to go to sleep after a while. So it will kill your battery. That's what's been going on with this vehicle. So between having a low or discharged battery plus me keeping the doors open, keeping the key on and stuff like that, I need to get this thing charged back up before we give it back to the owner. And um, because I'm charging it with the key off right now, the uh, 
the battery uh, monitoring system will need to be reset so I'll do that with a scan tool after I'm done all right so as I pointed out before there's our switch that goes bad we got a couple of harnesses we're gonna have to disconnect um, before I pull that out how about I show you the brand new one so we know what we're dealing with all right here's our new part right here direct from Ford that's our number right there ending in B hopefully you can read that um, the B means it's a revised part so they updated it so I'll just get it out and I'll show you okay this is what you get we get our new park detect switch here comes in this bag it has that part number but don't let that throw you off it's different from the one that's on the box so go with the one that's on the box don't worry about that number same thing with this it's got a different little part number and this is a tool an installation tool to help us install it and oh very nice of Ford to give us some instructions on how to do it Ain't hey, nobody got time for that and here's our switch up close you can see here's our actual switch right there and when you are pressing the button and I'll show you in the car when you're pressing the button on the shift knob what you're doing is you're pressing this down which presses that little micro switch right there so that's that's all we're doing so that's all that fails is that little micro switch right there at the tip of my finger so we got to replace this to fix that now thankfully Ford came to their senses and they allow you to buy just this micro switch with the harness so we can replace it used to be the whole shift knob selector had the whole assembly which is very expensive had to be replaced just to fix this well a lot of these were being repaired under warranties is costing Ford more money so they're like hey why don't we just come up with this now of course Ford is not gonna say that but that's I'm pretty certain that's why I don't think it was to save you money I think it was to save them money during warranty replacements but anyway if you notice when I'll show you on the on the one on the car this one has two wires this is an updated version updated part and it has two wires instead of three the old one's gonna have three wires they eliminated one wire I guess it wasn't needed so we're not using it same thing as it comes over here it splices into um, this black wire here probably a ground and then we come and it terminates in three wires over here on the old one you'll see it terminates in four wires and so and I should mention if you have on your gear shift selector if you have little buttons that you can shift gears up and down fancy right just with your thumb you're gonna have three more wires down here and those wires are gonna have to be depinned and installed in the new one uh, if I get a chance I'll show you how to do that it's just a matter of releasing the locks and taking the pins out of the old one and popping them into the new one not too bad but uh, just in case yours has that you're gonna have to do that mine this vehicle here does not have the fancy little um, shift selector on the knob there so we don't have to worry about that but let me go show you how this works in the car all right all I'm gonna do I'm gonna press this and we're gonna watch this piece right here this white piece is connected to our shift knob here and then we're gonna watch what it does with our switch you can see there's our switch and then here's our piece of metal right there we were just looking at and this is just gonna press on it watch I'll just press the button and you can see what it's doing it's just releasing it so when you are not holding the button it's gonna be there's a spring-loaded thing and it springs together and when I press it it releases just like that so that's all it's doing to that switch and that's all that's causing our problem right there that switch is not the probably the contacts are bad so it's not making a good connection good complete circuit computer doesn't see it it doesn't like it and it gives you that error message so let's let's pop this old one out all right so we got this connector here and it's pinned in with a clip into this and then we got this connector right here that we're gonna have to uh, pull apart now this is a little guy so we got to be careful not to damage this one you can see there's that one and then this one we do the same thing just squeeze it and pull so now that's disconnected and I was telling you see the three see these three wires down at the bottom there that coincides with the with the cavities down at the bottom here so this is already wired for a little special you know selector which you can push your uh, you know gears up and down if you want to go up and down just like a racing 
that's where it would go but you can see this model doesn't have it so we don't have to worry about deep pinning them and putting them back in if you did you'd have three more additional wires that would connect up over here and then we'd have to deep pin them from this connector right here that we're going to take out and we'd have to install them on the new one all right now for this one we're just gonna take a little trim tool like this and we'll carefully pry it out hopefully we don't break anything yeah just like that not too difficult and then we got to grab some uh, needle nose pliers is usually what I use sometimes you can use a uh, a screwdriver we got to pinch those tabs and pop it out um, and then we just got to make note of how this wiring is routed it kind of goes around right here and then goes under this clip right there. We don't want it flopping around or, and rattling, so we want to try to get it as close to the way it is right now as we can, and then uh, and then we'll pop our switch out. But let me go grab a tool to get that. All right, these are the two tools I usually use: either a long pair of needle nose like that, or my little um, favorite little screwdriver. So if I use a screwdriver, I'll just press on each side of those tabs and try to get it through. If I use the needle nose, I just kind of grab them both at the same time and pop it out just like that. Well, that was easy. All right, so now we can just kind of pull it from how it's routed through here. And now let's go get our special tool and we'll release this. Okay, as you can see, I got the vehicle powered back up because I needed to move the gear selector back to neutral. We need to have it off that pin so we can get it out. And of course, I'm a bozo, I forgot. In order to move it, we need to have this stuff plugged in. So I plugged them back in real quick so we could move it. So now I'll just get these unplugged and we'll grab that. All right, look at our new switch. This is kind of how it's sitting in the vehicle right now. And then there's two plastic prongs that kind of just reach around and grab it like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our tool and stick it down in between to release those plastic uh, tabs. And then I'll take a screwdriver or something, and then we need to see these little feet right here. Hopefully you can see that. It's two little feet sticking out. We just need to press on them from the inside. We'll just stick something down there and press on them and pop this out. That's all it is to get this out. All right, there's a different shot of our switch, and you can see there's a little plastic tab right there and one right there that kind of reach around and grab this. And so what we need to do is stick this if I can do it with you guys right in my face. Right down in between, just like that. Whoops, nope, I missed it. You guys have a better view than I do. Let me move you guys out of the way. Alright, so that's how we need to do it, just like that. So basically, we're just spreading these tabs apart just a hair one on each side and now we can just push on the two little pieces in there and just pop it out hopefully I didn't get in the way in that other shot but that's what it looks like with a little bit of light on it and there's a good shot of our two tabs sticking out so hopefully we can just kind of press on them And pop it out just like that no damage and while we're right here we'll remove our tool we don't need that anymore and if we did it right everything should be disconnected there's our old one all right there's our old part always compare it with your new part you can see we're the same other than the fact that I was telling you that this one has four wires going into the connector and three wires at the switch and then our new one is two wires there and three at the switch. Um, and that's, that's the upgraded version. This is what will work. Now that's for this vehicle. And in fact, there's many vehicles that this covers. So let me go ahead and show you the part numbers for the different vehicles that are involved. All right, here's a shot of the service bulletin. You can see this is 17-2219. This bulletin supersedes 15-0047. So some of you might have seen that TSB. And you can see all the vehicles it covers right here. And we're working on a 2013 MKX, so we're down here. But you can see MKT, MKS for Lincolns, Taurus, the Police Interceptor, the Flex, Explorer, and Edge all 
have this issue and let's go down to the parts so there if you need the part numbers hopefully that comes out right there this first one for a 2013 MKX that's the one I'm using right there but obviously if you have a different vehicle there's all the part numbers that you're going to want to look for for the different applications and they're very similar part numbers so you got to look closely all right we'll just take our new switch kind of lay it out how it was before and we're going to gently snap this back into its housing there we go you got to make sure to get those little feet lined up sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain and then you want those two little edges to lock in it should be nice and flat and square we're looking good all right, now all I'm going to do is kind of lay this back in place where the clips go. And it should pretty much route how it should go. And I'll plug everything back in and then I'll show you here in a second. All right, there you can see I got it all plugged in. I got it all routed back the way it was. I did have to pull their little sticker off because it was right at the bend. Um, but, you know, I tried to route it exactly the way it was. And then I, I generally try to keep plastic connectors like that off the housing so that they don't sit there and rattle. That'll just create a nice little annoying rattle that we don't want. And then we want to make sure our clip right here is all the way fastened and then the clip right there all the way in so as long as we got our switch in and everything buttoned back up we should be good to go we can test it out all right we'll look up there and make sure our p lights up and i'll just press the button and see how it, make sure it goes on and off you can see looks like we got a good fix and i just put it back in the neutral otherwise we won't be able to get our trim back in all right, now when I set the trim back in place, I just gotta remember that I have one, two, three connectors up front, four right here, and then the fifth one, where is it at? Oh, right here, still pinned in. We'll have to plug that in. So we got five different connectors we gotta plug in. And then once it's kind of down in place, and probably before we reach in and grab this, we will, so we'll have to do the front three, I think, and then Right here, this notch, we'll slide that in, and then this should just snap up into place back into our five little clips. And then once I do that, then I think I can grab these two. So we got those three, then clip this into place, and then those two. All right, it's just a matter of setting this in place and plugging it in. Might be easier to plug these in before I even get it into place. Ford, you could have gave me just a little more lead. There, all plugged in. Hey, what do you know? Wants us to shift the park. There. Hey, it works. All right, hopefully you saw what I did. Plugged in the connectors up there. Snapped this back into place. And then plugged in the two connectors back here. Ford wants you to have tiny little hands because it can be difficult to grab those. Especially when I was trying to stay out of the way of the camera too. Um, but you can see it's all placed back in. And now I just got to put... The eight screws four on each side back in all right pretty standard stuff i'm just going to get these all back in and just remember these are little metal inserts that are in there so they're just made out of pot metal we're just going to get them to snug up we don't need to try to tighten them like we're tightening down ahead all right i'm going to use my quarter inch ratchet just like i used to take them out but i'll probably use my little magnetic seven millimeter socket as you can see 
that that holds it in there so we don't drop it down. You drop these down to the bottom and then it sucks fishing them out. So by doing this I can put it in there and get it started like that. It makes it a little easier. Yeah, just reaching in there, starting them like this, so much easier. You'll feel it just gets snug like that. That's all we got to do. And once you get all four screws into place, like you can see that I have them all into place, now we just got to snap that connector right there and this one right here by my finger and this one right here. So those all go into there. And then these two, this one snaps into this. So we just need to make sure that all those snap into place. Yep, we're all good. And that one goes. So now we're all snug. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put the trim on. And you can see this side snaps in just like the other side. You'll know it's in when it lines up nicely right there. Alright, now we can take our little H trim set it back into place just make sure all of our clips are lined up and there that snaps back into place now we'll grab the other two all right these snap in the same way I typically put it up at the top first snap it in and then work my way down we'll do the same thing with the other one there good to go all right, like I mentioned before, sometimes there's going to be three additional wires down here. You're going to have to de-pin and install them on the new one. In order to do that, we need to move these white little locking tabs forward like that. You can pry them out a little bit and push them forward at the same time. Or you can use, if you don't want to pry them out and kind of bend them up like I did right here, you can just kind of press in on these little edges on this, each side and then press them in. That way you won't kind of mess them up. Anyway, once you get to this point, uh, obviously your wires are going to be down here. I don't have any, so I can't do it down there. But from this side, where the uh, connectors are, or the fasteners, we're going to go in with our tool. Now we can use either the tool that Ford supplied us, or we can use the proper tool. This is a terminal release uh, tool. This comes from a kit that I have. And we're just going to go in there, and if I can do it in one swoop, you can see we just once you pull push it in then we can pull them out together just like that and I don't know if you notice but there's a little nub right there right on the top that nub is going to go away from this connector so when you put them back in on the new one you'd be putting them in down here and you're going to be putting them in just like that just the same as here they just snap back into place and then we would pull these connectors back out into the lock position now when you are deep pinning them, we don't want to mess up where those go. I recommend take a picture of the exact wiring and coloring and cavity exactly where they are right here. And when you reinstall them, verify that each wire, each coloring on the wire is in the exact cavity position that it's supposed to be in. And on the instructions, they show you how, how the pins are supposed to look. So if we're looking at our harness right here on the wire side, you can see there's our four wires right there and these cavities are marked one all the way up to ten right there so in this case according to this diagram we would want ten nine and eight to have our wires so yellow would be number ten right here brown would be number nine red would be number eight obviously you'd want to make sure that that matched your picture that you took on your uh, the previous connector before you took it all apart make sure it matches what this diagram says uh, I would probably default to what was ever what was in the car. I'd make it match what was in the car before I would go with this if, if they conflicted. And here's the terminal release set that I was using. You can see this is a 23 piece terminal release set. I don't know who makes this, just some generic company. I think they're all made in the same Chinese factory. They just put a different name on it. Anyway, they come in handy. This one goes right there, comes with a lot of different. Um, tools for different release applications but they definitely when you need to get those electrical connectors apart it's definitely nice to have a set like this
Park detect switch. Something very simple can be quite annoying when it doesn't work. In any event, hope you enjoy how I fix these things. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.